What's up guys, it's Mars from Audio Judgment and today I want to talk about damping material. I used to call it dampening material, but I got bashed in the comments for not speaking proper English. So here I am pleasing the audience. Anyway, damping material. Some people swear on its effects, some say it's uh, nice to have, others say it's a downright gimmick. However, let's do our own private investigation. At the moment I'm working on a 2.1 boombox and I ran into some issues. Let me give you some context about the box. We have a central chamber, which is a bass reflex and houses a 6.5 inch subwoofer. On the sides we have two sealed chambers for some 4 inch mid-range drivers and their corresponding tweeters. Let's start with the sealed chambers. I talked about standing waves in the past and how they can easily form inside floor standing speakers. Since the box is so tall, there is enough room for low frequency standing waves to develop. However, in such a small box, surely there is no problem, right? Obviously, this is a trick question, otherwise there will be no point for this video. So let's investigate. First, we're going to measure the impedance of the driver in free air. What you want to do is look for peaks in the impedance graph. Here's the graph. There should be nothing suspicious here. We have the peak at the natural resonant frequency of the driver, but we also have this blip over here. Now this is something that you don't really like to see, however this is pretty common, something to do with how the suspension of the driver works. Nothing to worry about, if it's a problem it can be solved in the crossover design. So now that we saw how the driver behaves in free air, let's see how it does when we put it into our little enclosure. First of all, we see that the resonance peak to move up in frequency. This will always happen in a sealed box. The air inside the box alters the compliance of the speaker and makes it stiffer, if you will. So the resonant frequency goes up, depending on how large or small the box is. But besides the predictable stuff, we also have some unwanted spikes in the impedance chart. You might be tempted to say that, come on, it can't be that bad. Maybe you're right, but let's take a look at the frequency response chart. Well, what do you know? There are response anomalies at exactly those frequencies. The one in the middle doesn't look that bad, but the other two are pretty harsh to look at. Will damping material fix this problem? Who knows? Let's try it out. So I'm using this oddly looking stuff. Works very well. I always wonder what it is. Think it's recycled clothes or something. Anyway, I'm filling the chamber up with this stuff and let's do another measurement. Well, what do you know? No more squiggles. Well done, shredded jeans stuffing. Oh, and another thing. Have you heard the fact that when you add damping material in a sealed box, the speaker sees a larger box? Or to rephrase it, you increase the perceived volume of the box? Let's take a look at the resonant frequency. A larger box will result in a lower resonant frequency. So in the first case, with no damping, we have a resonant frequency of 135 Hz. And in the fully stuffed box, we have 130. Myth confirmed. And a glimpse at the frequency response, those sharp hiccups are gone, and response is nice and smooth. We can definitely say the damping material does its job more than satisfactory. However, let's expand our little investigation to the neighboring base reflex enclosure. Let's make this quick. BAM! Make a quick measurement of the subwoofer in free air, here's the impedance response. Similar stuff going on, we got the normal peak at the resonant frequency, some blip higher up in the frequency, and there is some little funkiness going on over here, don't know what's that all about. Let's put the speaker inside the box and do another measurement, this time we have a double peak because this is a base reflex enclosure, and the dip between the, those two peaks marks the resonant frequency of the box. We got a bit of a wobble at 200 Hz, and somehow this blip over here has gotten slightly worse. Anyway, let's add some damping material. And since this is a base reflex, I'm going to keep it safe and just line the walls with some dense stuff. This is specially designed for speakers and it's sticky on the other side. After we are done, let's do another measurement and check the results. 200 Hz peak is still there, upper peak at 70 hundred ish Hz is also still there, looks a bit better though. 
If we look at the frequency response, responses look pretty much identical. However, there is a dip at 750 Hertz, which looks much better, almost not there anymore. However, this is very close to the point where it's outside the playable range of the speaker. So I don't think it matters that much. We could try to increase the damping material quantity and see if we get any improvements. However, I'm not going to do that. You need to be careful with bass reflex enclosures. You can add more to the point of filling, but that might do more bad than good. If you obstruct the port with damping material, things can go sour really fast as you no longer have a bass reflex enclosure. Instead, you get a very leaky seal box. To keep it safe, always line the walls. You can use thicker stuff if you must. You can use 10 cm thick mineral wool that is used for house insulation. Works great. Not in this case, as the box is small, but for larger boxes, it's a good choice. And another solution is how I like to do it for uh, floor standing speakers. Keep the port in a high position, close to the woofer, and fill the bottom part with damping material. There is no risk of obstructing the port. In conclusion, is damping material effective? Of course it is. Why people sometimes say that is not? The reason I suspect they say that is because they use light material, like uh, those egg crate uh, sponges. If you line the walls with that stuff, it won't have any effect. I mean, it's effective against very high frequencies, but that's not the problem we are trying to solve. So if you want damping material to be effective, you need high density stuff. So that's about it for today. Next time I'm going to post a video on how to build the boombox I mentioned in this video. So don't forget to be subscribed if you have an interest in that project. And I'll see you next time.